Hi, I'm Daniel Mettler from TUSIC Internet Solutions, and I'm doing this series about uh, ASP.NET Web API. I think the most exciting and most important part of ASP.NET in the future. So in this short video, I'd like to tell you a lot more about what's happening on the server. Um, because if you've watched the previous video, you've seen there's the client side, there's the server side, and we're just gonna look more at what's happening on the server. Specifically, we're going to look at where the files are located, how we have to register the routes, because um, the way we've done it, you don't have to register anything at all. That's very unusual because there's always usually the requirement that you have to do that. So this is very simple. I'll explain a bit about the routing. That means how does this URL, which the browser sends to the server and does not look like the storage location of the files, how does that get mapped to the place? I'll tell you a bit about security some naming conventions, and then just also tell you a few things about the differences in using Web API from raw.net to the way DNN does it and the way we've done it in Too Sexy. So let's look at the server side and go in depth here. Um, just, you have to watch the previous video to see um, what it's all about, but if we look at the server side here, let's just start again at the very, very top. So first of all, Every app can have a folder called API. So I have some other apps I'm gonna use for the future and um, for future videos like a feedback app. And this one too has a API folder. This one had to have a feedback controller. And in this demo that we've shown, it has a simple demo request. So again, to just show you this, it's uh, this browser here with the app and you can click on something and it'll ask the server to tell it what year it is or something like that. So looking at the server side, um, in this folder API, we have this file called simple demo request controller. Now, you'll notice that even though it's called simple demo request controller, the client call actually only says simple demo request. So the word controller is one of these conventions in Web API, which just kind of automatically has to happen. It just has to be called that way because it's a data delivery controller thingy but when you call it you don't always want to say hey controller give me something you just want to say feedback save this for me so when calling it an api you're not going to use that word but the file name and the class needs to contain the word controller and that way this kind of a mapping that you see here will automatically get mapped to this controller now we have to inherit from this class here because this is a helper class which will deliver additional functionality for you. Um, for example, it'll give you the DNN security things. Um, it'll also give you other features uh, like access to the sexy data. So if you need to access like the feedback list that has been provided by anonymous users, you need to access the data to return it to the screen, right? So please inherit from this and everything will be very easy. The next thing I'd like to show you is this token that says HTTP GET. This more or less means that all the request information is in the URL. Very simple. The alternative, for example, would be an HTTP post. And there's a few other verbs like to upload files or to delete files or delete information in general, you would use an HTTP delete. I'll give you some examples of that in, in future apps, but just so you've heard of this. Then this here is a special DNN feature which works in this controller because you inherit from the sexy API controller. This more or less says that the following method, get module info, can be called if you have anonymous security access. I'll show you in future examples where you need editing permissions, for example. So you can say this method is available to everybody, like getting the year is not a very secret operation. But for example, the method to delete a file would only be available to people with editing permissions. So that's just a security mechanism. The next thing here, the validate anti-forgery token. I'll try to explain this by showing what happens on the wire. This was the last request getting the current year. And you'll see that inside the request, there's a cookie here and there's other things here, including a request verification token. This is an encrypted let's say a password, <coughs> which says the user really was on this page and he was really using this. It protects you 
um, from the API being hit by something external and causing a lot of load on your server. So if the if you say I only answer with the forgery token, then your code will not run if the token is not correct and not included. If you want to create a public API which works for other websites, you're going to have to remove that because of course that would require a token and it wouldn't work because the public website would not the, the external website wouldn't know the token for this page. The token is generated over and over, so you can't save it like up front and reuse it. It has to work for this user. So, so that's basically like the, the wrapping around it. Create a file, put it in an API, or just copy the one that you see from this demo. You have to inherit from the correct class, and then each method will say, what does it react to? What access level does it have? Does it require a security token? And then things like, what does it answer to? What's its name? Does it require parameters, etc. The simple examples that I've made here only deliver data, but don't require settings. So this is very simple. Let's look again what else I had presented. Security, we already looked at that. It consists mainly of the anti-forgery token and the user settings in DNN. The code we've looked at a little bit. And I'd like to now just point out a few differences depending on the uh, web API you're using. Basically, web API comes from ASP.NET. And it's a very simple system which will do the URL mapping to your command, ensure that all the parameters are inserted into your function, and ensure that whatever you give back is turned into JSON or something. Now, DNN adds things like security tokens and permissions, which works both in ASP.NET with DNN, as well as if you add too sexy. Um, what also DNN adds is a JavaScript helper, and uh, this is what you see in the code here. The, the two sexy controller here, which does this web API get, it just makes it much easier for you to write code than writing raw Ajax code. Then the first big difference is that if you're using ASP.NET the normal way, or if you use DNN, you have to pre-compile your code, which means you have to deploy a DLL, which means every change that you make while you're trying to develop will restart your DNN. That is very, very, very annoying. So what we did is, we just say if it's in the folder, it automatically can be accessed and it's on the fly compilation. That means the first hit will compile and from then on it has a compiled version. It's very flexible to develop that way. If you change anything to the file, DNN will not restart. It'll just simply recompile the file and work. Now, you may be afraid that this is slow, but if you look at ASP.NET 5, the way it's coming out in the future, Almost everything is going to be on the fly compilation. There's a really awesome compiler coming out, and it's already fast now, but it's going to be amazing in the future. So don't worry about that. This is much easier to develop. Then if you use DNN, you'd have to have some extra code to ensure that your web API can even be accessed to kind of get the URL to map to your code. If you use too sexy, that happens automatically. As soon as the file lies in the API folder, it's taken care of. And then what's also the case is normally in most systems, any APIs, since they're in the DLL folder, will be pre-compiled and work on all portals. In Too Sexy, it's on each app has its own little um, API, and that will make it very, very simple to work. So I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching. And uh, try it out. You really have to try it. Get your hands dirty. Have fun. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Daniel Mettler, Tusik Internet Solutions.